but it works quite well. Okay. So it works well for the angle the dominant. Why? Just remember that you're screwing in a circle. And if you're the same as users. Okay. A more advanced way, and this is actually not a very bad method, so called Gauss guided method. So, what we did, we just took at the right side in the Jacobi method the values of x from the previous iteration. But we can also split all the entries to the entries with the index that is smaller than the current index i and larger. And since we update each element at each at the step by step, so what we are doing is that we can update the first element, but why in the next update we will use the previous iteration? We can use the updated already. So here we use k plus one, not k. So update the first, it's like block coordinate descent. You update the first component, then the second, then the third, and so on. You do not do it, like, you freeze, then update, you update the first, the second, and so on. So this is exactly block coordinate descent method. And that, 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 that's what's going on. So who can guess what's, what's this in the matrix? So it's obviously at each micro step, at each small coordinate update, we are doing uh, a linear transformation. So after the whole, whole step when we update the whole matrix, it will still be a linear transformation. But how it will look in the matrix form? Upper frame, uh, right. So this is actually, in an indirect way, a solution of a linear system with an upper or lower? Upper, right? I think it's upper, but that actually doesn't matter. Right? Upper or lower, we'll see in the next slide, I don't remember. Part of the matrix. Yeah, lower. <laughs> so, consider symmetric positive definite case. Then we can split our matrix as a lower triangular part with zero on the diagonal, the diagonal part, and the Hermitian point. So diagonal is split. So then one iteration of the Gauss-Zeidig method computes this. So we invert the lower triangular part of the matrix and you multiply it by the residue. So again, the same philosophy, we select the columns. It can be used to interpret Gauss-Zeidig method as the preconditioning method. So we take the matrix, we approximate the matrix, so what's simple enough for, uh, for inversion after diagonal triangle? We know how to solve linear system with triangular matrices easily. So we take the matrix, we approximate it by a lower triangular matrix, and we use it as a precondition. So Gauss I think this is actually it. so if the matrix has the same edges on the diagonal, the condition number of the precondition matrix is the same. However, if it, uh, the condition number for the Gauss I method is lower. So again, if you take the Laplace equation, for example, in two dimensions, the condition will be significantly smaller for the Gauss I method. So you can also show, and this is a good exercise, that the so, so what's the iteration matrix here? The iteration matrix here is identity minus L plus D minus one D. So that's the iteration matrix. By the way, is this matrix symmetric or not? L plus D minus one D. No, it's not symmetric. It's actually sort of a problem of 
using our scientific recognition, eh? because we get a symmetric linear system with recognition and with from low triangle matrix, we get a non-symmetric system for which you cannot use contrary equation. You have to use something else. So this is sort of bad news. But actually, this matrix has always had a spectrum of radius less than 1. Showing this, this is a good exercise. So it means that if you have a symmetric positive definite matrix, the, the double-sided method always converges independent, even with the scaling parameters here in the one. So on top of Gauss-Eisen, you can either run ECG stuff or GMS, but you cannot run CG with Gauss-Eisen as the condition. So I have to mention, I already said it, but this is like a fixed statement, that you can also look Gauss side is a globe coordinate descent method. So if you take the energy functional, and at each step you update only one coordinate, and actually, which is also quite interesting, is that the order in which you eliminate, if you, you update the variables, is really important. So for one order, the convergence may be much faster than for another. Selecting the order in which you update is uh, it's a tricky question. So, and you can do it for nonlinear case, and there is also theory about the convergence. Uh, so, if you do block coordinate descent for a general function, which is, so there are problems where it's quite natural to do that. You can also do it instead of just a scalar coordinate descent. You fix one coordinate, which is a scale, you can do a block coordinate. You fix a set of variables and you update only them while keeping other things. So it's often done, for example, in tensor compositions because the subproblems in immunization can be easily solved. They can be, for example, quadratic problems. And the theory basically is that you take the cohesion of this guy and the convergence is the same as the convergence of the gauss lyman method applied to the cohesion. Finally, what you can do with this, so this is well, still used, this is quite old. These methods were used before crowd methods. So like when I told you that the gradient method, the quadratic gradient method was deemed unstable, people were using this kind of methods to solve uh, symmetric positive definite systems. And one of the most efficient is the combination of the Jacobian and uh, Gauss Eisen method by just introducing an additional hyperparameter here, formula. So we take the diagonal plus the scaled of diagonal part. So that's the preconditioner. So some facts about it, which we could give here without proof. For all omega from 0 to 2, it converges. Optimal selection is not trivial. Theoretically, in practice, this is a scalar parameter that can be done by gate search or by smarter optimization. So, if the Jacobi method converges with parameter tau equal to 1, which is not always the case, Jacobi means for falling equal to 0. So, then that, that's the optimal parameter. So, if the spectral radius of t minus 1 a is less than 1, this is okay. That's the optimal parameter. But otherwise, this optimal value is not known. Well, analytically. Yeah, that's, that, 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 that's not stupid, that's a good question. So, the linear system is a special case where the starting point is not determined for the convergence. So, the convergence is absolutely the same. Uh, so, asymptotic convergence, the slope is the same for any starting point. So, whatever you take a random starting point or zero starting point, 
the total number of career increases doesn't matter. The next option, when you have a good way of producing a good initial application. So typically, you, know, you, do, you have not, this, not, a, not one problem, not one linear system, but a sequence of problems which are connected. So you can reuse solution obtained from another linear system for the new one, but again, the convergence, even if you are close, maybe. So getting from 10 to minus 1 to 10 to minus 2 is typically as difficult as getting from 10 to minus 2 to 10 to minus 3. So there is no difference in that. That's specific feature of linear systems. So for linear systems, the selection of starting point plays very small role. For non-linear systems, not the case. For non-linear systems, so for non-linear systems, so non-quadratic non, non optimization is not the case. For linear, it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. You may be very close, like, okay, I managed to find an approximation which is 10 to minus 4. I need 10 to minus 6. You wait a lot. If the matrix is in condition. So, only the gifts go outside it, and all the others. <laughs> so, so this was like general precondition for symmetric positive reference matrices. Uh, for sparse matrices, there are also several usual suspects. So, if A is sparse, actually Gauss side is very cheap because the lower triangle part is also sparse, and we need to solve a linear system with a sparse lower triangle matrix. Solving a linear system with a sparse lower triangle matrix can be done in complexity that is proportional to the number of non-zeros. It's, it's very cheap. You just look at the equations, and when you go this backward step, at each step you only do constant number of iterations per row. So, the philosophy. You take the matrix, you are approximated by some matrix that can be easily inverted, and you use this preconditioner. The lower triangle part is not a good precondition in terms of the, the distance. So it may reduce the improve the convergence, but you never can get a good approximation to the matrix because you are missing half of the matrix. What you can do is you try to approximate the matrix more accurately. And this is, and, and then you also may want to have a certain parameter which controls how accurate is the approximation of the matrix. So this is done by using approximate elliptic decomposition. So elliptic decomposition is the main tool for solving linear systems. Sparse elliptic decomposition is the main tool for solving sparse linear systems. And in so-called incomplete elliptic decomposition is the main tool for preconditioning sparse linear systems. But they do not want to do the full factorization. Maybe we do not have memory and so on, but <coughs> how, we, how we do that? So basically, the main problem, with, as, as you might remember, is that if we try to compute exact decomposition of the matrix into a product of permutation matrix, sparse or triangular, sparse upper triangular permutation, by permuting rows and columns, uh, then the filling will grow if the graph corresponding to the matrix, the sparse matrix, doesn't have good separators. So if you have two-dimensional grid, sorry, you will have filling, you will have a complex filling. So the idea is that you might, you want to control this filling. So you do exact elimination step, and in this elimination step, in the new, in the updated matrix, a non-zero element appears. And then you just say, I don't want this new element, and you, I just artificially zero it out. So now we have not exact representation, but certain approximation. But this approximation will be for surely sparse at the factorial sparsity. We can easily solve linear system on such approximation. And thus, it might be a good precondition. So, yeah, this is attempt to illustrate. So if you eliminate a variable from two equations, then we have this new field. 
And what am I to just say to you? Let's assume that this 3 over 5 is 0. So this was the original equation. It had only, in, in this equation, it had uh, sort of rhetoric. We're, eliminate, uh, we're eliminating x1, right? And, from, and we have x10 that appears. So we have a fill-in. But we might say, and that's what, what is called incomplete AU of 0, we say all the new fill-ins are not allowed. So we just remove remove this value. In, and in terms of the matrix, we just put a 0 instead of what should be there. So the fill-in, they appear only in one place of this. So let's write down the most stubborn elliptic Bayesian code. Uh, there, that's where the new fill-in will appear. And here, we only need to cycle.